dearly beloved of God, we appreciate him as ever. From everlasting to everlasting, our God is God. And our God is good. So let us pray, Father God in heaven, in your goodness, thank you for the opportunity you give us. Thank you for your word. The word that gives us life. And we appreciate, oh God, that even as we think through again, the opportunity that you give us, may we be encouraged to continue living on for you. And so that your glory be revealed more and more in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, we thank God who gives us opportunity all the time. We come again to you with his word. And thank you so much for ever, ever sparing time to tune in, listening in. And so that actually this is interaction, interaction with you. And as we interact with our God through his word. And so we shall continue on with our personalities in the Bible, the men and the women who made a difference, the men and the women who did great work, the men and the women who have left an example for us, the men that stood the test of times, the men and women that because of what they did is recorded in God's word, and so that for us who are living in this no generations that keep following each other, we may also edify ourselves. We may also encourage ourselves to do good. And just like I've always said, that something good will ever be mentioned about you. Now let me mention another personality. We've been following one after another. And this time, it's a prophetic book called Joel. Prophet Joel, who lived thousands and thousands of years ago. Prophet Joel, who prophesied in the southern kingdom of Judah. Prophet Joel, who is dated to have lived around 586 BC. And you know BC is a period that talks about before Christ came. And so from the time of Christ, these are thousands of years. But this man prophesies, teaches, speaks things here that are written down for you and for me. And now, as I mentioned, the name of Joel itself, just Joel. When you dig the meaning of the name Joel, just like other Hebrew names with the meaning, Joel means Yahweh is God. Or literally, the Lord is God. And now this alone, when I was reading through it, when I was reading about it, Joel, the Lord is God. Yahweh is God. Just like you have had other names like Daniel, Daniel, which we said, God is my judge. God is my judge. Like you had the name Ezekiel. Ezekiel is the strength of God. Maybe two more examples. Just like you had the name Samuel. L. Samuel. And Samuel means God has had. Depending on the circumstances that this man, that these people maybe could have been born. Also the circumstances that surrounded there are times when they existed. One more, and this is from the New Testament, Nathaniel. I'm just, I just picked them randomly. Nathaniel, where you have L, 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 L at the end, and it means God has given. Now, Joel, the Lord is my God. The Lord is God. And so this name is what we're going to think about in these few moments. And in the Bible, the Lord, God, Yahweh, and it is a self-proclaimed name that God gives himself. God reveals his name, his own name. And why he reveals this name 
for purposes over decades, over centuries, over generations. The name so meaningful, the name so relevant, the name that talks about who God is. The reason why he's saying the Lord is God. And so I just asked myself within that does any name matter? As we look at Joel, does Joel matter? And of course, actually, there are vernacular translations of the name Joel, Joel, name them. Now, does the name matter? And of course, as, I, as we go deep into this, you'll discover that actually the name the Lord is God matters a lot in our lives. And so what is in the name? I'm basing on the name Joel. And so that maybe we shall look at some names that we, you and I, could be possessing. And then the name, the Lord is God. What is, what is it all about? And so that as we worship God, as we pray to him, as we trust in him, he lives by his name, pray the Lord. He lives by his name and he does things by his name because the Lord himself is God. And so what makes it significant? Now, is it significant to have a name? God who pro proclaims his name and just like we shall see shortly how he does it and where he does it, in which book he does it. But very, very quickly, in our usual circumstances as human beings, in our normal circumstances, people give people names. Parents give children names. In the tribes, there are, there are tribes where you hear name, the name, depending, pray the Lord, depending on maybe the circumstances of their birth. And just like going to outline three things that are a basis for giving the names. And the Hebrews, the Hebrews had the reasons why they gave names. Now for some, give names depending on the generation basing on generation from generation to generation, passed on. And so that the honor, the name lives on. And so there are some people who give names because that is what it is. Passing on from generation to generation is a badge of honor. And so that it's passed on. And so that you give the lineage from generation to generation. So some people give names for that matter. Another, some people give names because of the significant meaning that is behind the name. And so people give names basing on the meaning, on the meaning of the situation in which someone is born, but circumstances, you'll find some names sounding very nice because of the meaning that they have. Like the name that we're talking about, Joel, could have, you know, been given this name depending on the circumstances they are, they, are, they are about. And so this name, depending on the meaning, and there are tribes that give names, not just any name, but meaning best names. Not because it is generational, like we have seen in, the, in the example number one, but the name of the meaning, the meaning of the name, what it means to be called by that name. And when you analyze your name, the meaning of your name, you can actually align yourself. Like now, Joel, if the Lord is God, if you are given that name, Joel, the Lord is God, what kind of character must you depict? Must people see in you? And then the third scenario that I want to give about the name is some people give a name because it sounds nice for them. You hear a name and then, oh, that sounds nice. And then you give the child the name of you name yourself because it is cute, because it is standard, because it feels nice. And so that people give names basing on various reasons. Maybe I've given three, but there could be others. And so Joel, the name, <coughs> could have come under one of those circumstances. Now, in ancient East, just like many tribes in Africa, the Hebrews gave names, and each Hebrew name had something that it means had a meaning and our compass bearing for us as Christians, when we choose names is we base on scriptures. It's biblical. So now I'm using the name Joel and we dig a little bit deeper. God gave himself a name. 
the Lord is God. He self-proclaimed it. And his name is Yahweh. You've heard Yahweh. You have heard Jehovah. And if we had the time to dive into Hebrew, maybe we would have actually dug a little bit more, more and more. But clearly coming out in Exodus chapter 3, God proclaiming his name. Now, what name are we talking about? We're talking about the name of the prophet Joel. But Joel in itself, the Lord is God. So when we go to Exodus chapter 3, when the Israelites were in Egypt and God was sending Moses to go and speak to them and retrieve them from, the, from captivity. So the man asks a question that was relevant for, her, for us, that was relevant for you. So in this Exodus chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, and I would just like to ask you to read the entire chapter. Take time to read. It's one of the, the most interesting, interesting chapters in the Bible. So in, in verses 14 and 15, the Bible says that God said to Moses, remember the story is about God sending Moses to go and speak to Pharaoh. The Lord said, God, I mean, God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent you, has, has sent me to you. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to these so this to the, to the people of Israel, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And thus I am to be remembered throughout all the generations. Now, friends, when you read this, and remember the name that we're talking about is Joel, and God proclaims his name I am who I am. And when you come to translations, of course, in the local languages, you will find it variously translated. But the, the thing is, I am who I am. And God proclaims his name here to Moses that you can tell them. And when you analyze this, God declaring himself who he is. Now, possible translations bring it down to, you know, to, to be understood better. When he mentions, I'm the God of Abraham, I'm the God of the patriarchs. Patriarchs were the forefathers. A patriarch is an ancestor. Now, Abraham, Moses, I mean, those men, Jacob, Isaac, mention them. Now, when he says, I am, he never changes. His attribute is he never changes. He remains, I am. Meaning that yesterday, I am. Pray the Lord. Today, as we talk now, I am presently. And then tomorrow, I remain, I am. So God never changes. That's what it means, by the way. His name for the patriarchs, I am. For the Israelites, when they were in Egypt, even when they were suffering like that, I am. He never changes. For them on the journey, as Moses was going to lead them in the wilderness, I am. And then for them, when they were in the promised land, he remains, I am. And when he talks about generations upon the generations, meaning where we read about him in Hebrews, that I am, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, I am. And so future generations should also remember him as I am. So friends, the name Joel specifies this for us, you and me, that the God who spoke then, the God, the Yahweh, Yahweh, the Lord, who spoke then is still the same God whom we serve today. He never changes. He remains I am. He doesn't say I was, not at all. Because actually when I say I was, Maybe in 2010, I was. Now, as a human being, you will find actually that many things about me have changed. Developing gray hair, developing bald heads, things like that. Many things change on a human being. But our God, praise the Lord, never, never, never changes. And so when he says, I am, 
And when you read the name Joel, the Lord is God. He remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. So God is, I was God to Abraham. I am God now to you. I will be God in the generations to come. I will always remain God forever and ever. So in this name, I just sat down reading around and then I said, I think I should speak about this. And it speaks to me greatly. And so that, of course, actually people give their children names. Now consider, just like we said, people give some give names based on their, from generation to generation, their, you know, their lineage. Some people give names based on the circumstances of their birth, the meaning, or something that like your card, the meaningfulness of the name, and then some others, because actually it sounds nice, even if it has no meaning, even if it worships the devil, as long as it sounds nice, some people do that. But we as believers, the issue that I'm bringing with you today, this time as people who worship the Lord God, is that the name has a meaning. And so we are looking at God, and God himself giving us an example, you and I, that actually the meaningfulness of the name is very, very important. So God and he's, he's the only one and there is no other besides him. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 34, Exodus, I mean, Exodus still, chapter 34, he does the proclamation again to Moses when he was telling him to make another set of tablets. 34, verses 6 and 7, he does the proclamation and said, 6 and 7, the Bible says, the Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, pray the Lord. He said, the Lord, the Lord, a God of, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping a steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the iniquity visiting the iniquity of the fathers on their children and the, the children, the children's children to the third and fourth generation. Now, praise the Lord, friends, that actually in a few minutes, I just want to examine this with you very, very quickly in this name, Yahweh. So in the name, Joel, the Lord is God, Yahweh is God. Now, he describes himself in the, this Exodus chapter 34, verses 6 and 7, that actually he is full of mercy and grace, praise the Lord. That the God whom we work, we serve, the God whom we are talking about now, the God whom we are listening about, the God whom you are worshipping is a merciful, mercy and grace. Yes, merciful and gracious is the Lord. He delights in giving what they are deserved, what they deserve not. Now, grace and mercy, we may not deserve it, he gives it to us. That is his grace. First on God's face, pray the Lord, friends. First on God's face is not judgment. But first on God's face is grace, mercy towards the most undeserving sinner. And the reason why he says he is full of mercy and grace. So in the name Joel, the Lord is God. We discovered actually God is one of the descriptions of God is he is full of mercy he delights in giving what they deserve not, what I deserve not. The reason we stand and pray the Lord because we are unworthy servants, but by his mercy, by his grace, we still stand and we praise the Lord for that. So in this name, Joel, there's that meaning, and I derived it very, very greatly from there. And I said, I must speak it, and I must leave it. Living, L-I-V-E, to live that name. So Yahweh, number two, is that Yahweh is abundantly patient. And he mentions it, that God describes himself as slow to anger. In this name, we find a God who is slow to anger. He is not easily angered. God gives chances and opportunities. We sin a lot, like those people sin a lot. And we shall look at the message that Joel delivered. God is abounding in, you know, in love. He is slow to anger. That God is Yahweh. He forgives indeed. Now, another thing that we discovered in the name of Yahweh, Yahweh is God. 
committed and immovable love. He is. And faithfulness. Yes, he describes himself as so. And so in this name, Joel, we find this. And he says, thousands and thousands of generations. He is an immovable mover. Praise the Lord. His love and faithfulness spans through thousands and thousands of years. Remember that actually we say when we are praying the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, and we are appealing to his love that he showed those people. He showed Abraham, he showed Isaac, he showed Jacob, he showed Moses, he showed David, he showed Jeremiah. And since he never changes, so we appeal to that love. That unmoved love, that unmoved favor. That actually, since he had that favor upon them, May he have the same favor upon us. And so we appeal to it because he, is, he himself is an unmoved mover. And he is. And so when you are praying, when you are speaking about this, when you say God of Abraham, the favor that he showed Abraham, despite his sinfulness, despite his background, and so I always say, God, do the same to me. When he moved and, and chose David, the same God, have the same mass upon me, a sinner. And that is the point. And another thing is Yahweh is God who is quick to forgive. And this is the most profound need of, human, of humanity. Forgiveness creates a newness. Forgiveness creates something fresh. A situation that is so bad and someone pronounces, I forgive you. And when God pronounces, I forgive you, it creates to recreate something. I, how I wish we shall find time and talk about forgiveness. It recreates a situation. It recreates a person. Someone who was downtrodden will look up smiling because forgiven offender. And so God is forgiving. And another thing that I actually find about Yahweh is that he's perfectly just towards guilty generations from one generation to another. Now this is the point. That actually since God is forgiving. Since God is full of mercy. Since God is, is all these things. But he punishes. He punishes sin. The reason why he does not turn a blind eye. To the guilty. He will visit the iniquity. He says in Exodus chapter 34. That he will visit. He will visit. And so until we understand this. Until we know this. God will not turn a blind eye on the injustices that there are in the world. God will not turn a blind eye on the injustices that happened during that, those times. The people that came and devastated his people, the Babylonians, the Syrians, the Assyrians, he dealt with them as well. But as long as his people kept in, in, their, in their lane of knowing that God forgives and God loves and God is you know, is great. So God will not turn a blind eye on the injustice that happened in the world. He does not turn a blind eye on the hatred. Hatred. He does not turn a blind eye on the, on the greed. You know, this generation is actually struggling with very, very many things. And we are living in a generation where there is a lot of greed. There is a lot of abuse. There is a lot of manipulation. People might know how to manipulate God does not turn the blind eye on that. So one, one sin should not hurt another person. So the Lord, friends, the Lord is God. He is forgiving, he is merciful, yet he is a just God. He gives according. He gives according to, you know, he shows an amount of your, your respro God reciprocates and, you know, he pays back your, your faithfulness. So the Lord is God who relates with his creation. And we shall get back to this name, the Lord, because it's also a personality. But as time goes by, we shall look at the message that is delivered by prophet Joel. The Lord is God. And we shall look at what he said to the people. Now, friends, I am here to pro proclaim that there is no other name but the name Yahweh. That name that is above, that never changes. I am. He remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's the one that I'm inviting you to. That you appeal to his love, you appeal to his care, you appeal to his provisions, you appeal to his 
favor. The favor that he had generation is past on the people that have mentioned the patriarchs that are mentioned. And even during the New Testament times, the, the men and women that actually God, Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ had favor upon. So we say that since you never change your God, here I am. And that's the name. And so when, as you talk about prophet Joel, by the way, you'll hear in another episode that actually he is the shortest. He's one of the shortest prophets, but his writings are most are the most quoted. Why? We shall dive into that and see. But what we're saying is, the name Yahweh is God, is what I'm living with you. Yahweh is God. And that is his nature. He never changes. He remains the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And I pray that actually the same God blesses you like he blessed Abraham. The same God blesses you like he blessed Isaac. The same God blesses you like he blessed Jacob. Despite our iniquities, he calls us, come back, my son, come back, my daughter. I mean, the same God who blessed generations past, may he bless you, may he forgive you, may he grant you another opportunity to live and serve him in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we say, Amen and Amen.